board. All right, we are here on Jesus in Coffee Conversations. Thank you guys for tuning in. Today's video is a little different. As you can see, we are on Zoom and I have my best friend here. She's gonna talk to you guys about um, being married and having kids and all of that great stuff. So do you want to introduce yourself first? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you just said. You waiting on me to say something? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. Oh, the introductions. Are like, you gonna your name? Like, how long you been married? How many kids you have? Okay. So, um, my name is Crystal Mitchell, and I have been married for eight years. On August twentieth, will be the ninth year that we have been married and I have a eight-year-old daughter named Kendall and I also have a one-year-old named Christian. So I have a son and a daughter. My husband's name is Kendrick. All right. So yeah, Kendall is my goddaughter for you guys that don't know and Christian is my nephew. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing, you say you've been married going on nine years this year, right? Yes, yeah, so it's been eight years, but on the 20th of this year, it will be nine years that we've been uh -huh. married. All right. Can you tell us, like, what expectations did you have before you got married and then what the reality of being married is? Okay, so when we first got married, I just honestly thought that it was going to stay the same because we were, you know, very happy. I thought it was just going to be exactly the same as it was, you know, when we were dating. But it was still happy, but, you know, you mature and you grow over the years. And so when we first got married, I was really still getting to know my husband. And so it changed you know, once we got married, like I said, because we were still getting to know each other. And, you know, over the years, it's a little different, but we're still very happy with one another, but it's just not the same as when we were dating because we have kids. So all of that changes your life. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you have two, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so the honeymoon phase, you know, that's something that we all go through. Even like if we're just dating, you have like that moment of everything is great and happy and the sun is shining every day. So how long does that last once you get married? Okay, so it'll last like a couple of years. Um, when we first started dating, I would get flowers he would buy me my favorite snacks like strawberry fanta or a zebra cake so you know you just get like a random surprise and now i still you know little things that he knows that i'm gonna like but it's basically on like a special occasion and i'm guilty of that myself um it's you get, you know, more of those things when you first start dating, you're trying to impress the other person. And so a lot of things that you would do when you first met or you started dating, you wouldn't, you, 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 okay, so let me rephrase that. So some of the things that you did when you first started dating, you wouldn't do. So like when we first started dating, I would have never walked around you know, with my hair tied up or, you know, just like little things like that because I was still trying to impress him. But now it's like, okay, well, I can't mess up my hair or I can't do this and, you know, just things like that. And so you just get used to each other. So we're still, you know, in deeply in love with each other, but, you know, I, he might not open the door for me every time like he used to or, like I said, I'll get like a special little prize, but it's my birthday or it's Valentine's Day, you know, things like that. Yeah, that makes sense. 
So what has been a wife? <laughs> okay, so it pretty much taught me to not think about myself as much because it's not just me. Before I got married, I lived by myself. It was just me. I just had to take care of myself. But now, you know, I have somebody else that I have to take care of as well. So um, some of the decisions that I used to make when it just involved me is different. So like any type of financial decision or anything that involves my kids, we have to make those decisions together. So I don't make any type of important decisions without him. So that's one thing, you know, that marriage has taught me. I'm, I have to think about, you know, my husband. I put God first and then I put my husband second. And so my grandma always taught me, you know, when you cook your food, you always fix your husband's plate first. And so, you know, I always make sure that my baby's taken care of. Yeah. And that's a good thing. I think a lot of women can be like so independent that they forget like it is supposed to be God and then your husband and then everybody else after that. Yeah, that's a good thing. All right. So what do you think the hardest part about being married is? So um, the two hardest things for us was um, dealing with finances. So, you know, you need to be on the same page when it comes to finances. Before we got married, I had my own savings account. I had my own um, checking account and vice versa, he did too. But, you know, when you get married, it's not just you. Now you guys are one. So you, we put all of our money together, you know. So it's not like you have this account over here and I have this account over there. No, we're working together and we are one. So that was like uh, something that we struggled with when we first got married. But, you know, once we did it, and it doesn't work for every couple, but it, thank God, you know, it worked for us. So um, once we started putting our finances together, we started winning together, and now it's more money in the, in the house for our family. And then just, you know, getting along with family members that can always be an issue and um, I think one of the questions that um, we talk about in a little bit I'll elaborate on that a little bit more but just like I said um, getting getting along with different you know family members can be very challenging so um, but the easiest part is just you know, loving each other. It's, he, he's not a hard person for me to love. I still love him. If anything, I love him more now than I did when we first met. So, yeah. I was there from the beginning. So, you guys <laughs> are a great couple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys make a really good couple. So, then I got to see the whole, like, from you guys dating. Okay. Being married and being parents and all of that. So what advice mm -hmm. do you have for women that want to be married? Okay, so, um, you know, a lot of people are just like trying to rush and get married. You know, it's going to happen on God's time. So I think, you know, you should take your time to get to know your spouse. It's, um, it's no rush because, like I said, everything happens when it's supposed to happen. And, you know, just making sure that you have a mate that you can get along with. That's very, very important. The, the most important thing that I learned from uh, my marriage is to pray every single day. Because when you think that um, something is not possible, God will show you a different way because it's nothing too hard for God. Nothing, absolutely nothing. So if you pray every single day, your marriage is going to be good. You know, even when you're mad at each other, you know, you you still have to pray for each other. Now, it's two specific books that I really, really encourage um, wives to read. So one of them 
Um, I actually bought it from my aunt. It's called uh, 31 Prayers for Your Future Husband. It's by Jennifer Smith. And they also have one for um, the future wife. So you're already praying for your husband. You know exactly, you know, your dream man. So, you know, if you're praying for him, the, it's, it's just something powerful about prayer. You pray mm -hmm. for him. And, you know, just watch God work his miracles. And so, because prayer can change anything. It's Now, I haven't read that one because I didn't find out about these books until after I got married. But I have read the one that's called uh, 31 Prayers for Your Husband. And my husband read the one with 31 Prayers for Your Wife. So we decided to read that together. And I finished it. And when I started praying for my husband... I noticed, you know, his whole attitude changing. I noticed, you know, him having much better days at work. I mean, I just noticed a lot of different things, um, more positive things happening in his life. So I highly, highly recommend, you know, married couples reading it. And I'm actually reading this book right here. It's called um wife after god i'm reading this one too and this book is designed to bring you closer to your husband and to god and so i've been reading that and it's changed you know some things about me to make me be a better person so that i can be a better wife mm -hmm. and that's the great thing about prayer too is you're praying for people but god is changing you at the same time so that's you know what's so great and powerful about prayer. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're going to talk about being a mom. Um, what is the most challenging thing about that? Oh, that's a lot of challenging things. But the thing that I struggle with is um, juggling my schedule because I have a very, very busy schedule. So it's really yes, hard it for me to all of the tasks that I take on and take care of my kids because if you know me I want to be the best at everything so I want to be um, I want to be the best wife the best teacher the best friend anything that I do I want to be the best at it so sometimes I put you know too much on myself and it can become overwhelming mm -hmm. but um you just it's the best decision you know, that I have ever made. And so, you know, being a mom. And so, like, making decisions for your kids can also be very challenging. You know, like, okay, I got to go to work today. But, you know, Kendall isn't feeling good. Well, is she, you know, really not feeling good? Or is she just trying to stay at home? You know, things like that, like, oh, should I take it to the doctor? You Should you take this lightly or should you take this seriously? I mean, that's just one example. But, you know, just making any type of decision just regarding your kids, just making sure that you're making the right decision um, for your kids can be, you know, very challenging about being a mom. Because yeah. you always want to do what's best for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So being a mom... Like, you have your career, you're a mom, you're a wife. Like, how do you balance all of that? Well, I mean, you just kind of do what you have, that you do what you have to do. Like, I'm always tired, but tired or not, I just make it happen. You, when you have kids, you make sacrifices and you do things even if you don't want to do it. You know, like, I'm tired Kendall wants to go to the fair or Kendall wants to go to cheerleading practice and I just got off work I'm tired but you know something so small that's going to put a, a smile on my child's face you make it happen you know you just do you make sacrifices and do what you have to do and I mean I have a planner so I use that planner because you're going to double book yourself with doing things and you know, like I said you just you just do what you got to do. Yeah. You just make it happen. Yeah. So it's like a lot of, you have to die to yourself, really. Like, you got to die to yourself in your marriage. You got to die to yourself as a parent because it's not, you know, just 
you anymore. You have your husband and your kids and all of that going on. So, mm -hmm. so what about what expectations? Like when you found out that you were pregnant the first time, with like what expectations did you have with that? <laughs> Well, okay. So I was very blessed. Uh, when I was pregnant with Kendall, I just wanted a little girl so bad. And when I was pregnant with Christian, I really, really wanted a little boy. So I was blessed that I got what I want each time. So when I was pregnant with Kendall, I was like, oh my God, that's going to be my little baby doll. And I'm going to dress her up and do her hair and things like that. And I still can do that because she is... Um, a girly girl, but she doesn't like getting her hair done. So I don't have the patience to do her hair because she don't like getting her hair done. And so it's like, um, as a child, I always wanted to play basketball. So of course you kind of put your dreams on your kids sometimes, but she doesn't know how to play basketball. She's a cheerleader. She so, you know, it's like, it's things. <laughs> yeah, she's not interested. So, and then... You know, Christian is one, so it's still hard to figure out, you know, what he is going to be good at or whatever. But just, you always think, like, before you have kids, you, like, you watch other people's kids in the store, and you're like, huh, they need to get on their kids, and why are they letting their kids run around the store like that? So you always think before you have kids that if you get on your kids or if you, you know, give them a spanking, you put them on punishment, whatever your form of discipline is, you think that the child is going to behave themselves. You can do all that. I mean, I first said Kendall. I first said Christian. I might pop Kendall. I might tap Christian's hand. You know, whatever your form of discipline is and you stay on them because you want to keep them safe. Like, that's the top priority. But they don't listen. They still they still don't listen. So I just didn't. I always, you know, from a if if it's a child that's not doing what they supposed to do, I always thought like, well, that parent can't be doing anything at home. So I became a parent, and I was like, Ooh, I should have never said that because I'm going through it, and you won't ever ever know how that feels until you have your own kids. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> That is true, yeah. <laughs> so as a, I think I asked you this one already. Like, what has been mom taught you? Um, yeah, okay, so like I said, um, not to be selfish, because, you know, you, my mom always wanted me to do better than her, and I want the same for my kids. So I sacrificed a lot for um, my kids and pushed them to have opportunities that I never had. So you know, you just, it also teaches me to watch, you know, my behavior because I have two little people that are watching me. So you know, I want to make the best decisions because I want to be a good role model for them because I want them to grow up to be an overall good person as well. Mm -hmm. And I think parents forget that their kids are watching, like both of us are teachers, and we have our students coming in and they're telling all their parents business, like what they did the night before and all of that. So that's important as a parent to remember, like your kids are watching, whether you realize it or not. So that is, mm -hmm. um, do you ever have moments where if you're doubting yourself, like you feel like maybe you're not being like a good mom or a good wife? Mm -hmm. All the time, because this is bad, but I mean, I feel like I always put my job before my family because I don't want to lose my job. I worked so hard to be a teacher and it's long hours. It's a lot of time put in if you want to be a good teacher. Anybody can just go in there and be a teacher. But I want to be the best teacher. So I the time and I don't I'm one of those teachers that don't leave the classroom until five or six o'clock. And so my family is at home. And you know, that's I shouldn't do that. I'm gonna have to work on that. And now I'm selling paparazzi. 
doing very well with it, but I don't get home right away, you know, but you know, the income from both jobs is pretty good. So, you know, it's like, like I said, it's just those sacrifices. So, but I'm going to have to adjust my schedules. And sometimes, you know, I might fuss at Kendall about something and she might really have not even done anything. So then that might make me feel bad. But you know, what? Don't what I do is I apologize to her about it. Because, you know, it's grown up that don't even know how to say I'm sorry. You know, mm-hmm. saying sorry can just take you a long way and that is something really important you know being married to somebody if you do something and you didn't mean to do it you say i'm sorry you don't just assume that the person just knows that it's okay so that's another thing with um me and my husband he's like well you know that i'm sorry i was like but you didn't tell me you didn't say it and so he's like, you're right. And so like, if you don't tell me that you're sorry, I, I don't want to hear it. When I don't just act like we didn't just get into an argument five minutes ago, you come over here and tell me that you're sorry. And I'm just saying, like, we teach our kindergartners that now at five years old, but it's some adults that aren't used to that and they're not brought up that way. So, but just saying I'm sorry takes you a long way. So even... If I do something wrong with my kids, my husband, I'm not perfect, and I, I'm sorry. And you just try not to make that same mistake over and over again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Definitely make sure that you are humble enough to say sorry. Um, how do you keep that spark with your husband alive? Like, especially after you know being married for so long. So right before um, the COVID-19, we found a babysitter. And as soon as we started saying we were going to have all these date nights, like we started planning all these date nights and we even have like a little jar, you know, we're saving money for the date night so that we can go and do things without the kids. Like it is very important that you spend time with your spouse without the kids, just you and him. So um, the books that I'm reading, they have a lot of different, you know, ideas of different date nights. Pinterest, of course, has a lot of different ideas. You know, they can be like a little extra romantic or they can be, you know, just y'all going out to eat for dinner or just going on a walk with each other. You know, just spending that time together is um, how we keep our spark. Yeah, those so date kinda, nights. Yeah, no so it's kind of like you just dating each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. And that'll, um, that helps us mm-hmm. out a lot. Yeah. So, is there any advice that you would have, like, for the women watching that are like, they want to be a wife, they want to be a mom? Like, what advice would you give them? Um, just go for it. I mean, it's going to be one of the scariest things that you've ever done in your life. And it's by far the hardest thing that I have ever done, but it's the best decision that I ever made. I still remember being scared, finding out that I was pregnant with my daughter. What in the world am I going to do? I mean, I didn't have at the time that was you know I was making a lot of money how am I gonna take care of this child and you know what like I told y'all earlier it's nothing too hard for God God is gonna work it out so if that's what you want in your life you you go for it because it's been I love my kids as worsome as my kids are I love them so (laughs) nobody else is gonna talk about how worsome they are only me but you know, um, best decision that I, that I've had and I'm done having kids, but I have my boy and I have my girl. So, yeah. So I guess it's my (laughs) kids. You'll be on babysitting duty. (laughs) (laughs) My kids will be grown. So yeah, that'd be, uh, (laughs) 
<laughs> it is Kendall, not Kendall help me watch him. <laughs> Kendall is on um, babysitting duty too. <laughs> she's ready. <laughs> Well, she's watching Christian now. She's watching Christian right now. So she'll watch, she'll help me watch your kids. Too. Exactly. She's getting her practice in. She'll be ready. <laughs> well, thank you so much for doing this interview for us. Um, oh, guys, if y'all have like any more questions, just type them in the comments and I will pass them along to her. And we will um, try to answer those as best as we can. Um, thank you again for doing this. I really do appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Y'all uh -huh. have a great day. Real quick, you sell paparazzi. Do you want to tell them like the information for that, or you want me to just put it in the description box? Um, I'll tell it to you, and you can still put it in there. It is www.amotherjewels.com and all of this beautiful accessories that I am wearing is from Paparazzi. If you have any questions about that, please contact me. Yeah, and the jewelry is awesome. I have a bunch, so I highly recommend it. All right, well, I will call you later. Thanks again for doing this, and I will see you guys next video. Okay.